Hey guys, this is Nick, and since the announcement of the Steam Deck, there have been heated debates on the value of having a native Linux app compared to an app running with Proton. Most people see this through the lens of Linux gaming, but we could also apply Proton to many desktop apps that only run on Windows right now. So I think it's interesting to take a look at what's the value behind a native app, a Proton app, and should we care how we run these apps on Linux? Do you know what you should care about though? Today's sponsor, Skillshare. Okay, so this video is sponsored by Skillshare and if you've been on YouTube for more than 10 minutes, you probably already know what Skillshare is. They're an online learning community which has courses on virtually every single topic that you might want to learn, whether it's improving something that you already know or learning something entirely new. Now, personally, I've been using Skillshare to improve the video quality of what, what you're watching right now. Basically, check out this before and after. This is one year prior to this and this is now. I think the results speak for themselves and I used a course on better film lighting, a course on color correction in DaVinci Resolve and general camera handling courses. But if you want to learn something else, not camera or video related, there are courses on everything. On Linux, for example, there's plenty of that. Now, creating your account is free, but if you want access to all courses and all chapters, you'll need a Skillshare Premium subscription or you can also just click the link in the description. If you're one of the 1,000 first person to click it, you'll get a one month free trial of Skillshare to start learning what's interesting to you. So we all know what a native Linux app is, right? It's an application that's been developed and compiled to be run on Linux based systems. It's using the native libraries and APIs that Linux systems have access to. It's basically meant to run on Linux and not on another system. Now, what's Proton? Well, unless you've been living under a rock for the past few years, you probably already know what it is. But let's sum it up real quick. Proton is a distribution of Wine, basically, the Windows translation layer. It also packages a bunch of other libraries that basically talk to the native APIs and libraries that Linux systems have access to, mostly focused on 3D graphics and audio. Now, all of these libraries bear barbaric names such as DXVK, VKD3D, or F Audio, but that's not important. They work and they work well. So, Proton was made by Valve and it's basically baked inside of Steam directly, but you can also use it to run anything outside of Steam if you prefer. So, there's still an interesting thing because Proton in itself is native to Linux. It's not an emulator, it's not a virtual machine. It's native Linux libraries. They just take the calls that Windows application make and they translate them into calls to APIs that Linux has access to. So in that sense, a Windows application running with Proton is basically a native Linux application. But for the sake of being more clear here, we'll refer at applications developed specifically for Linux as native apps and the rest as Proton ports. Now, Proton is good. It's really really good at what it's doing. And if we can believe Valve's claims, it's going to be even better before the end of the year because they aim for 100% Steam library compatibility through Proton, including those pesky anti-cheat programs. Which means that finally, I'll be able to remake that how to play Fortnite on Linux video without being all clickbaity about it. Now, Proton is so good at what it's doing, in fact, that some companies that have traditionally been porting software to Linux have announced that they would maybe start looking at other opportunities to work because they feel that their work is not really needed anymore. For example, Feral Interactive, which is notable for bringing to Linux all the Tomb Raider series, the Dawn of War series, or the Total War series, they have recently announced that they wouldn't port Total War Troy when it releases on Steam. They won't port it to Linux because basically it's gonna run with Proton and they don't see any added value on it. They will still port Total War Warhammer 3 apparently but not Troy. So they are starting to lose interest in that sector because Proton basically does it all without them having to do any work. You also have Frozen Bytes Interactive, which has created the Trine series and the more recent announced Starbase. This developer actually told people to use Proton to run their games instead of using the native Linux ports that they themselves made, citing the fact that the Proton port will have better compatibility, better performance, better stability, and work better with various input methods. Now this is seen as a problem by a lot of people, because surely if developers feel that Proton is a magic bullet that allows them to just write for Windows and run on Linux on top of that, then surely they'll never think about making a Linux port, right? 
Now this might be true. As a developer, the cost of making a port for another operating system and to maintain it is pretty high and the most optimistic overviews place Linux at, at maximum 3% on the desktop. Then again, should we count Android? Should we count Chromebooks? Should we count servers? Because you could game on servers. What does life even mean? But on top of porting the game to Linux, you also have to maintain it afterwards. You have to provide support for the various distros that people will use to run your game, even though they're supposed to be all using the same game, you could have issues. And you have to port all the updates and the DLC that you will create. And this can even restrict your technical choices, because if you have a Linux port and a new library that does something awesome for your game is available, but not for Linux, then you can't use it or you need to stop making a Linux port. That's what happened for Rocket League, for example. So Proton provides developers of games and applications a unique opportunity because you can basically just develop your game or your app for Windows and then you either ship the game on Steam and Linux players will be able to play it or you package Proton within your app and you distribute it as a Linux version and you call it a day. So yes, of course, Proton will make developers less likely to make a native Linux application or game. But is it really an issue? Let's split the analysis into two groups, games and applications. For games, it's not really a big issue. Like Proton is a translation layer, so it's gonna have some kind of performance overhead in some cases, from five to 10, maybe sometimes 20% less performance compared to the same game on Windows. But compared to the same native game on Linux, the performance difference isn't really existent. A lot of older ports for Linux were made using OpenGL, and that's a far less performant API than the native Vulkan or DirectX 12. A lot of games running through Proton that had an OpenGL port for Linux run way better under Proton than they ever ran as a native Linux version. And for games who use Vulkan directly on their native Linux port, well, we now have Fidelity FX Super Sampling, we have DLSS, which are technologies that will basically make that performance difference go to zero. These two technologies allow a user to render a game at a lower resolution, but to upscale all of the assets to a higher resolution. And honestly, not a lot of people can tell the difference between an upscaled game and a game running at the native resolution. Okay, purists with your 8K screens and your digital foundry level skills of IP ping, maybe you can tell the difference, but the average gaming kiddo can't. Now, I'd even go as far as saying that in some cases, a game running with Proton is better than the native Linux port that we got. Two examples here, Borderlands 2 and Total War Warhammer 2. Borderlands 2 has a native Linux version. It runs pretty well. Thing is, it got a last DLC right before Borderlands 3 released. And that DLC never made it to Linux and never will because the developer just didn't see any advantage to port it and so they just left the port to die. For Total War Warhammer 2, the problem is different. You have a native Linux version and it's getting the updates and the DLC three weeks to a month later. And that port also doesn't have cross-play with Windows players. The Proton ports for both of these games, the Proton versions, well, the Windows versions running with Proton, they work great. They have better performance. They have better stability. You get all the updates immediately and you can play with your friends and you've got all the updates and all the DLC. There is no contest here. Sometimes the Windows game running through Proton is better than the native Linux version that we already have. Now, for desktop applications, which we haven't seen much of, if at all, but Proton could be used to run these desktop applications, especially since it bundles the XVK and stuff like that, so it could even be used to accelerate with your hardware, with your GPU, it could be used to accelerate programs that depend on graphics like Photoshop, like Adobe Premiere, like AutoCAD. It, it could be a real opportunity for developers as well. But there are more issues with these than there are with games, especially in terms of how the application would look and integrate with the desktop. For a game, you don't really care. The game has its own UX, its own UI, it's generally full screen. You don't care how it looks. Even if it was designed for Windows, who cares? But for an application, it's not gonna pick up on your theme. It's not gonna auto apply your dark theme. It's not going to integrate with your system tray, with your dock, it's not gonna have jump lists. It's just not gonna look like a native Linux application or native GDK or Qt application. It's just going to look completely out of place. But in the case of these desktop apps, does it really matter? If a professional application has no native Linux version and no real world equivalent, would you rather not have it because it's not native 
or have a Windows version running with Proton even though it's not well integrated. I know I'd prefer having the app around. Now, there is still one major issue with letting everything go through Proton. That's the fact that for now, only Steam integrates Proton natively in their game store. Ubisoft doesn't have a Linux client and doesn't have Linux games. Epic Games doesn't have that either. GOG and Humble can provide Linux games, but they don't integrate Proton at all. Which means that if we focus on only having Proton versions and no more native Linux games, it means that we're basically locking ourselves in inside of Steam for Linux gaming. The other stores won't have any native Linux games to provide because they won't be developed anymore. And since they don't integrate Proton at all, they won't have Linux games at all. Then again, Proton is open source and integrating Proton inside of your Linux game client doesn't seem like a hell of a big job. Like somebody created an entire Epic Game Store client using the Epic APIs in the form of the Heroic Games Launcher and they integrate all that stuff and that's not a big development team. If they can do that, GOG, Humboldt, even Ubisoft, Epic Games, EA, they all can do it in a matter of weeks. It's really not that tricky. So is it really an issue? It might be at the beginning, but in the end, if there's enough interest for people gaming on Linux, the other players will adapt and will integrate Proton as well to be able to run their games on Linux without asking developers to port anything. But I also see an opportunity here because as more games and maybe in the future more applications become available for Linux through Proton, we'll also get more users because people will see that app compatibility and game compatibility is no longer an issue. And with more people will come more developers and more interest because as the market share will grow, developers will think that there's a market there. So we could enter a virtuous circle with more people interested in Linux and using it, more developers making applications, which draws more people in, which draws more developers. It could get the ball rolling to give us a honorable enough market share. And according to certain people, this would also bring the end of Linux because apparently having more people use your system is a bad thing. So yes, I'd say that probably Proton, if it keeps getting better, will bring the end of native Linux games for a while. And for games, I don't think that's an issue. You will get crossplay, you will get timely DLC and updates, you will get more support, you will get more stability, you'll get probably more performance in a lot of cases. For applications, we haven't seen Proton-based applications yet, or not that I'm aware of. But that's not really an issue because we already don't get attention from big name developers as is right now. So if we can get some apps that have professional labels attached to them, some apps that people need to transition to Linux to be able to accomplish their work, then having a Proton version is as good as having a native app. You have the app, it, it will bring people in. And who knows, if Proton manages to get more people in, more developers, more apps and games, and the Linux desktop grows, maybe we'll see native ports again. In the meantime, I'd say let's not look a gift horse in the mouse. If we have that amazing open source, community developed compatibility layer that manages to get us applications and games that we wouldn't have otherwise, I mean, why pass up on it? So this video was made possible by Slimbook. If you don't know about them, they are based in Spain, in Valencia, and they make Linux desktops, Linux laptops. They ship worldwide. They have a wide range of keyboard layouts, a wide range of prices, power, performance. I only use their stuff nowadays, desktop, laptop, keyboard. I can only recommend them. They're really, really good products. So I left a link in the description. If you need a new Linux device, you know what to do. So thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, you can like and subscribe. And if you didn't, you can dislike and tell me why in the comments. If you don't like YouTube, you can also watch all of this on Odyssey. And if you want to help me turn this into a full-time gig, which I'm going to be doing at the end of October, you can join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members, and you'll get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!